All right, part two of the Telecaster guitar build. Here we're going to use the profile jig, and we're going to get the taper right at the top part of the neck here. We're going to trace this. Then we're going to do that on the heel side here as well. And we're going to take a line, and we're going to draw it, so that way when I get this on my jig, I get this leveled off properly. So I clamp it down. And I put a little spacer in here so I get the right taper. And then next we're going to take this to my pin router with a three quarter round over bit. And the first pass is going to take off a little bit, see where I'm at. And what I'll do next is come back and take a second pass that's a little bit deeper. So this jig is nice and safe, keeps my hands away from the bit and everything. We're going to lower it with my foot piece here, turn the router back on, and go back down and route it. I would only recommend guys doing this if you've had a lot of experience and you've got a safe jig to do this. I would not freehand this at all. I would only do this using a jig. This is definitely a more advanced technique. So I'll flip the jig over and run the other side and I realized I've still got the nibs on the end dots, so went back, lowered it, and redid it. So then you can see here I've got the taper. It's thinner at the nut, and a little bit thicker at the heel. So there's still lots of carving left to do. So I got my shaper, my spoke shave, and a bunch of files. And we're just going to sit here and file this down. I use the router to get a profile that's consistent, and then I just stick to that profile with the hand tools. So it doesn't really speed up the process other than gives you a consistent profile. And here we'll go back and forth with a ton of different tools to get this correct. And I'll start at the nut. I'll go back and flip it over and do the heel. Make sure I got the right taper. I've got a feeler gauge in here as well that you'll see me use. And really it's going to help keep the neck at a consistent contour. So here we'll flip it over. One of the better tools that I have is this Dragon Rasp from Stu Mac. It's very aggressive. It cuts very smooth. Really happy with that tool. It's probably one of my favorite neck carving tools. And then I built this nice little jig that holds the neck so I have access to carving it. And here I'm using the spoke shave and just shaving off as much as I can. I use that curved spoke shave to kind of just pull it together. So like I said, lots of back and forth with different files, different tools. Here I've got my feeler gauge. I checked it at the nut on the fender neck, looking pretty consistent. Then I went back to the heel and still got a little bit left to do on the heel. But at this point, doing pretty well. It's got a good feel. Again, taking that dragon rasp and just going back and forth. And once I'm done with the rasps and the spoke shave, I get my black sander and begin to sand away. This is 120 grit sandpaper and just start sanding away all the different lines that were left from the spoke shave. You know, if I've got a couple spots that I'm happy with, I'll go ahead and hit again with the file. But here, now I'm at 240 grit, and I'm just going to continue the sand, get this even. Pretty happy with the way it turned out at this point, so I'm going to move. Here's the contour on the back of the neck, looking real good. Next up is to profile the radius of the neck and since the heel here requires so much more sanding I've got 60 grit and I'm just going to go over the edges and get those edges pushed down a little bit so it's easier to sand when using ebony I try not to use that radius jig I have because it'll tear out so this is again 120 grit sandpaper on the Stumac radius beam. 
and lots of sanding, you know, lots of elbow grease. Just get in there and sand. Got the vacuum going, pick up all the sand, all the sawdust. And then once I'm done sanding, I go back and clean out the frets. Make sure that I don't, I've got the proper depth all the way across. Careful when you do this, I got a little bit of pinching on the first fret that you'll see. This is Stumax fret wire. So here we're going to bend the fret wire and this tool makes things so much faster. Keeps the bend consistent as well. So we're going to cut the fret wire to size and I've got a 24 jig hold'em piece of wood so I can cut each fret pop it in each hole and then I've got all the frets organized so we'll just cut and go cut and go cut and go all the way down the fretboard so I got the fret wire sized then we're going to glue in the fret wire and this is some big controversy but I've always used type on yellow glue put a little bead on it get my fret call push it down You'll get the fret to pop in, it'll kind of just like snap in. And then you just wipe away the glue. And you consistently go back and forth across all of the frets. I'm not going to film this whole process because this ends up taking forever. Fretting is definitely a time consuming process and if you want to get the fretboard right, just take your time and go slow. So there you can just see it pop in. Wipe off the glue and continue down the board. So then after I do about 8 to 10 frets, I always set the frets and glue them down. I get the clamping call and just clamp the frets down so they all sit evenly. I'll go ahead and nip them then. And then we'll take my fret profile sander here with the file that I built and we'll get the frets to a 90 degree angle on each side I use my finger to kind of feel where I'm going on the front we'll just go back and forth get a nice feel get that fret flush against the fretboard and then we'll flip this over and do a 35 degree angle This is an old trick then one of my buddies showed me is you get a sharpie and you color the top of the fret. That way you know where you're sanding so that they're all level. And again we'll take the Stumac block and just sand these down and go back and forth slowly across the board. You really don't need to take that much off. If your fretboard's nice and level you don't have a whole lot of sanding to do. Here this didn't take that long using 320 grit. I think here I actually probably sanded too much. So after you level the frets you gotta go back and recrown them. And This is my Stumac diamond grinder fretting tool. And My guitar neck is still on that jig so I've got a lot of excess it's not clamped down to the granite plate, it's clamped down to that piece of wood. And you're just going to recrown the fret. So after you sand it, it's got a lip, and you're just going to recrown the frets. And here I go back and forth and re-level it. And you can see as you're doing it, you know, you've got a, a crown, you'll see where it, you have the sanding lines, and you just want to get down and recrown that fret. Again, lots of back and forth here. This is one of my better tools if you're doing a lot of fret work. It's a great tool to have. All in usually fretting takes me about two hours to do a fretboard. So then I take my sanding stick but this I think is 400 grit sandpaper and we're going to pull off any of the scratches that were left from the diamond fretting file 
Again, this is just a back and forth process. This is really a great handy tool. Gets in a really nice tight spot. You're just going to sand back and forth. Anywhere you see scratches, you're just going to kind of pull the scratch off. I'll speed up the video here a little bit. And for every fret, I just turn the sandpaper and go back and forth. So I get the edges, I get the crown, and get a nice smooth fret all over the board. So then next up is some 600 grit sandpaper. And again, pulling scratches off the board, off the fret. Just going to go back and forth. And here you're starting to get in, into a polish mode. You're just going to go back and forth across the board. I'm not worried about scratches at this point because I'm going to clean those up with a razor blade. So then lastly, I've got some steel wool here. And again, we're going to go over the fret polish up the fret with the steel wool. Now you can see the fret has somewhat of a shine, a little bit glossy, but still looking a lot better. I'll just go down the board. Then I get my Dremel with the fret buffing pads. and We'll get this up to about halfway on the Dremel and polish the board. Polish the fret, I mean. So then lastly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this razor blade and clean up the fretboard itself. And this is like scraping. And I'm going to clean up any of the sanding dust or anything, any of the scratches off the ebony here. You can see how much whiter the dots become now as well. And this is a trick. Instead of masking off the fretboard, this is kind of my shortcut to help clean that fretboard up and get it nice and perfect. So then lastly on the board, we're going to go ahead and wax it. I've got this Brie Wax. We're just going to go up and down the board, let the wax soak in. So I'm going to kind of seal the board, get it nice and clean. Now that it's all polished, ready to go. And just go down the board here, rub this in. Actually put two coats on. You can see where my saw bit on that first fret as I was not 100% careful, the, the fret Ebony kind of chipped out a little bit, so. And then lastly, what I do is I take a cotton buff and just buff this out. Get it nice and clean. We'll just let this sit for 24 hours then. Just take a clean cloth, wipe up any of the excess, and here we go. So then next up here, we're going to put my logo on the guitar neck. Drew this out on a piece of paper. And get the Dremel routing base from Stu Mac. I've got a 16th inch bit here. I tape on the logo. I cut out where the B is in the middle so this sticks. And we're just slowly going to route. And this is somewhat freehand. I have to admit this probably wasn't my better ones. The bottom of the B didn't turn out properly so I get a little hand chisel and kind of clean it out. Straighten out any edges that look, don't look good. And again, I'm going to use that 5 minute epoxy and some turquoise inlay. And put the turquoise inlay in, mix it up, and just push in the turquoise just like I did the inlay dots. You know, really get into the corners, make sure there's no bubbles, really push it in. So this is 24 hours later, it's looking pretty good. We're going to get a sanding block and just begin to sand this off. It's 5 minute epoxy, but since I mixed it with something else, I let it sit longer. 
that logo is looking pretty good. So next we're going to drill for the tuners and I use the radius piece with the sandpaper and a cloth and the template on my drill press. And this is not ideal but I didn't get the tuners till about two weeks after I started this. And so I'm just going to slowly start the drill, get my starter hole with the template. I'm not going to go all the way down, I'm just going to go about halfway down. I'll move this over with a backing board and drill it out the whole way. So this is definitely not ideal, but because I didn't have the tuners at the time. So what I do is then clamp a piece of wood underneath so I don't get any blowout. And take my drill and drill it so I get it nice across all of the holes. So you just gotta make sure you're holding the drill at 90 degrees, go slow, clamp it down so it doesn't move. It's actually looking pretty good. So then lastly we're gonna sand with 600 grit across the whole neck, get all the nooks and crannies done. Not worried about the ebony or the maple kind of bleeding into each other because what I'm going to do is wipe this all down, make sure it's clean before I finish it. But lots of sanding here to get it clean. I always take this up to 600. Changed out my paper. I had an old piece, so I got a new piece. Don't have any scratches. This is looking really good. So I'm going to get some mineral spirits and just clean up the neck. Make sure there's no scratches or anything anywhere. We've got good lighting in the basement here, but I just want to make sure it looks perfect. So we'll clean it up. Fretboard's all done. Back of the neck's all done. And this is a perfectly quarter sawn piece of wood really beautiful at this point. It's all ready, ready to be finished. Can't see that fret mistake anywhere. It's got some beautiful flame maple. Fret work looks pretty good. Logo looks great here. So next up we'll finish it and put this on once it gets warmer. Guitar's almost done. Thanks guys.